ओके गाइज सो आई वेलकम यू ऑल टू अवर लाइव लिनक्स ट्रेनिंग फॉर मेम्बर्स एंड दिस इज देशन नंबर इलेवन एंड इन दिस सेशन वी विल टॉक अबाउट द शेल एम्बेडिंग एंड ऑप्शंस बट लेट मी बिफोर आई स्टार्ट दी सेशन लेट मी फर्स्ट हैव अ लुक एट द प्रीवियस टॉपिक्स विच वी डिस्कस्ड इन द लास्ट सेशन एक्चुअली वेरिएबल्स आर of two types that we use in linux the first type of variables are the system defined variables which are already defined there by the developer and those variables are written in the upper case or in the capital letters like host name like pwd like shell so these are the system defined variables and the user defined variables are the variables which the user is defined as per which which are defined by the user as per the convenience so if you want to see the details of the system defined variables you can execute echo dollar and the variable name like echo dollar shell or echo dollar pwd so these are the system defined variables these are written in the capital letters and these are defined by the developer in the system and the user defined variables can be defined by the user while using the system so let me define a variable where is equal to 100 and if i want to print the value of this variable i can execute echo dollar where command so it will print the same value so this is the user defined variable you can define any variable but the condition is that the variable name cannot start with the number like if i will try to set a variable 100 where is equal to 500 so this will give an error because a variable name cannot contain the numbers in the beginning you can define it like this there is no issues in that but it cannot start with numbers so this is the condition you have to keep in mind that a variable which you are going to set in the system that cannot start with the number with any number it can be alphabetic only it can only start with the alphabets so you need to keep it in mind while defining the user defined variables in the system you need to mention the alphabets only in the beginning now in this session we will talk about the shell embedding so in this tutorial we will take a brief look at the child shells embedded shells and the shell options shells can be embedded on the command line or in other words the command line scan can swap in a new process containing a fork of the current shell you can use variables to prove that new shells are created let me show you let me execute a command echo dollar var1 since this var1 variable is not defined yet in the system this variable is not yet present in the system so it is not giving us anything it is an unbound variable we have not defined it yet that is why we are not getting anything on the screen but we can define it at the time of printing the value either we can define it first and then we can print the value or if we want to do it in one go we can simply use echo dollar and then then we will use the brackets and inside the brackets we can define the variable first like var1 is equal to 500 then semicolon and after that we can mention echo dollar var1 like this and press enter so this will print the value so either we can define the variable first and if we want to see the value we can execute echo dollar var1 command or we can define it while we are trying to get the value at the same time but this is the temporary one it will only use the new shell if we will execute the echo dollar var1 command you will not find anything on the screen because this was temporary we have defined it while we were trying to get the value of this variable so in this the variable one only exist in the sub shell or in the temporary shell so it was temporary it was not uh, permanent it was defined for the temporary time or for the 
subshell only so that we call the subshell you can embed a shell in an embedded shell and this is called the nested embedding nested embedding of the shells <coughs> let me show you how can we do that let me define a variable a is equal to shell so we have defined this variable that a will have the value is equal to shell now if i will execute the echo command echo dollar c dollar b dollar a and then we will mention dollar and then in the brackets we can define b is equal to sub semicolon echo dollar c dollar b dollar a semicolon then again echo and then again in the square in, in the brackets we can define c is equal to sub and echo c dollar c dollar b dollar c dollar b and dollar a like this so what we will get on the output i think i made i made a mistake let me check mm, echo hello can you hear me guys guys can you see my screen yes sir arvind there is a continuous problem with your there are no issues from my side you need to check your internet connection here i'm going to show you the example of the nested embedded shell here we have defined a variable a is equal to shell and in the next line we are going to use echo command echo dollar c dollar b dollar a and after that we will mention dollar b is equal to shell then echo dollar c b and a and then again echo dollar here i forgot to write the dollar sign and again the same thing press enter so it will show us the output like this so why we are getting this output because a is defined as a shell so this is printing the value of a first then we have defined the b as sub so for b it will print sub so here this echo command will work and it will only print the value of b b means sub and a means shell so we are getting the result as sub shell and for this one it is printing the details of the all variables a b and c so c is defined as sub b is defined as sub and a is defined as shell so here we are getting the output as sub sub shell so what we are doing here we are using the nested embedding of shells we are using the nested embedding means we are defining something in the temporary shell and at the same time we are calling the value so such type of statement we can use if we want to use the nested embedding of the shells now i will talk about the back ticks single embedding can be useful to avoid changing your current directory and how can we do that let me show you let me execute a command echo and this time we will use the back ticks not the quotes so keep in mind that i'm going to use this back tick sign this is not the single quote this is the back tick cd slash etc so what this command will do it will allow me to go in cd etc i will change my directory to etc directory and then i will execute ls hyphen d asterisk for all and then i will grab the string there which is is equal to pass so it will grab pass there in the name and then i will close it so if i will execute this command it will print the names of some files so there i will find the passwd file and passwd dash file 
so we can use the back ticks also we have taken the output without entering there in the etc directory with the help of echo command so single embedding can be useful to avoid changing your current directory we can directly do that from the present working directory now let me give you one more example let me show you the difference between the back tick and the single quote let me mention echo back tick where one and here let me define the value of where one as five and semicolon after that and then I will mention echo dollar where one and I will close this back tick so what we will get at the output we will get the result as five why because we have defined this variable is equal to five and then we are calling its value by running the echo command if I will use the single quotes instead of back ticks so what should we get on the output as I told you whatever we mention after the echo command in the single quotes the same thing is printed on the screen this time it will not print the value of the variable it will print the entire string whatever we have mentioned there in the single quotes so this is the difference between the single quotes and the back ticks with the echo command if you will enclose something in this back ticks then you will get the value of the variables or if you will use the single quotes it will print the complete statement that you will mention within the single quotes now let me talk about the shell options you can set and unset the variables both set and unset are the shell built in commands <clears throat> if you will execute type set it will show you that it is a shell built in or if you will execute type unset so again it will show you the result as shell built in this means both these commands are commands are built in the shell these are the shell built in commands not external if a variable is not defined in the system as I told you yesterday also it is called the unbound variable and if a variable is unbound variable we don't get anything on the output but if, in case if we want to get an, mess, an error message on the screen for the unbound variables we can enable the option by running set hyphen u command this will enable the unbound variable option in the shell and if we will try to call the value of a variable which is not set in the system it will show us the result as unbound variable so here we are getting the output as unbound variable or if we want to disable it we can mention set plus u so this command will disable this unbound variable option and we will not get anything on the screen for the unbound variables to list all the set options we can execute echo dollar dash command so it will print the list of set options for your shell the no clover or hyphen c option will be explained later I will explain the no clover option later in the upcoming sessions because, because it will create a lot of confusion for you if I will show you the no clover option right now <clears throat> but you can set this option by running set hyphen c and then you can mention set hyphen u like this so we have set the no clover option if you will again execute echo dollar dash command this time it will give you this different result it will show you some additional characters also <clears throat> or if you want to disable it you can mention set plus u okay so again it will show you the previous result this c will be gone that was earlier present so this is the no clover option I will teach you the no clover option in the upcoming sessions now I would request you to go through the practice exercise that is given on the page number 153 of the same PDF which I provided you in the WhatsApp group you need to go through all the eight questions at your own practice these questions try to solve them 
and if you find them difficult you can take the help from the solutions that are given on page number 154 and if you face any challenges or something is not clear to you you can ping me on whatsapp or you can drop a message in the whatsapp group so i'm going to stop this broadcast as of now on youtube but we would be there on google meet to discuss the problems thank you so much for joining one more request if you have not subscribed to our youtube channel then you can do it right now and you can share our videos with others also thank you so much bye bye take care